Welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're going to be going over an aspect of photography that people have been asking me for. Can you please walk us through the process of you toning an image? Now there are a couple issues that you run into when toning an image and I see this all the time. I teach photography and students always want to tone images with certain issues. And this might be difficult on a video screen to see, but we've got this beautiful girl, absolutely wonderful location, beautiful light, it's out of focus. So you might not be able to see right here that this is out of focus. We're going to open this up. I will show you this image is out of focus. I could use sharpening. I could use shake reduction to increase the focus of this. But the fact remains they focused on their forearm. Learn to use the focus point, move it and put it on her eye where it should be. Don't just focus. It doesn't work like that. You need to control where you're trying to focus, not just focus. The last thing we have this image and what I'm going to do in this image is show you how I would go through toning it. Now look, there's no right or wrong way. We might have three different photographers that would tone this a little bit differently. I'm going to be doing a traditional tone. Like I'm not going to do any funky color grading or anything like that. I'm just going to simply tone this image. We will go ahead and start the process here. And the first thing that I do is I always make sure that I'm working in 16 bit down here. So you can see down here, I've got my color profile set, which is very important because at this point, Nothing has been set as far as the color space on a raw file. It just saves your image. It doesn't apply anything. So that's why we're applying it now. I want to work in Adobe 1998 because that's what I have Photoshop set in and I want to work in 16 bit. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the color profile and I'm going to decide on the color profile that I want. Now I don't want a ton of colors in this image, so I'm not going to be using Adobe color because it's a little bit too vivid for my likes. So in this case, I'm going to use Adobe Portrait because it's gonna be a little bit flatter in contrast and have a little less color saturation. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from as shot and I usually try auto because I don't like auto in most things in Photoshop, but for color balance, a lot of times it does work. Sometimes it's a little bit too warm, but sometimes it works. Now I can control that. Remember, color balance doesn't always have to be accurate as the time you shot it. So if you wanted it to warm up a little bit, or if you want it in this case, I want to cool it off a little bit, we can do that. One thing to remind people, this does have a little bit of magenta in it. You don't want magenta in photos. It's, it's very difficult to get out of skin tones. So if you do have some magenta, in this case, it wasn't totally overbearing, so it's not a big deal. But if you have something that's really magenta, you want to make sure you dial that out. You'd rather have something very yellow than magenta because magenta is difficult to fix. Now, the issue with this photo is the background and the foreground are not very even. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this area and then we're going to adjust this area. The problem is if we make a global adjustment in this basic panel, meaning it's going to affect everything in this whole image, if I try to brighten it to make her look good, it's brightening this too much and making that way overexposed. So we don't want to do that. Now we can open this image up. I like to open the contrast or lower the contrast and then open the shadows. When you have a flatter image, it makes adjusting the image a lot easier. It makes it easier to open areas and it makes it easier to darken areas. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over then to the selective adjustment. And the reason is because most things that you're going to be doing in photography are going to be selective, meaning they're going to be in one specific area. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and reset this and I'm going to darken the sky up a little bit. Now I'm going to darken my highlights. I'm going to lower my contrast. It's easier to darken your really bright highlights if your contrast is a little bit lower. And we'll come in here and just apply that. That looks pretty good. Then we'll come in here and just slide the slider to where we think it looks good. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, if I wanted to brighten just her, it's going to be difficult in Adobe Camera Raw because what's going to happen is if you try to 
brighten her, you're going to have to be really exact on these edges. If you don't, you're going to get a halo on the outside of it and it's not going to look very good. So I'll show you what that, that halo looks like. We're going to come up here and hit plus. I'm going to reset this. So the halo is caused by extreme brightening of an area. So I'm brightening that, but you can see there's spill over here and that area is getting brighter. We don't want that halo around our subject. So if you need to brighten your subject a lot, it's going to either take you a long time to apply it or you're not going to do a very good job and you're going to have like dark areas and light areas and it's just not going to look realistic and seamless. Now, the artificial intelligence for making subject selections in Photoshop is so good, a lot of times you'll see me do it here. Now, what we're going to do, instead of making a super bright adjustment, is we're going to actually open the shadows some more, and we're going to just open our exposure, and then we're going to come in here with a decent feather, and we're just going to apply that to our subject here. And I'm not going to be going crazy about trying to get it exact in the arms and legs and stuff like that. We're just going to come in here and apply it best we can without making it look horrible. Now we don't want to go over the edge and you can see right down here I've gone over it a little bit so I'm going to hold my alt or option key and what that's going to give me is like my subtract area and now I can take that back out. So I just want to make sure that I do an accurate job when I do this because we'll see that. So that looks pretty good. Now I didn't make a huge adjustment so if I want to come in here and adjust those after the fact I could. Now I can come in here and brighten her face up a little bit if I wanted. So I could hit okay there, hit reset, and then I could make a brighter face adjustment because the fact is the face isn't gonna spill over or give me that halo. So I can open this point up, open that area up as well. So that looks good, so we're good. We don't need to make it perfect, we just need to make it look better. So the reason that we I love Adobe Camera Raw is in a camera, you take a photo and then it applies everything to it. Well, right now, raw photo, nothing's been applied to it yet. So we're just manipulated. Now when we hit open, it's gonna apply all these settings and all these adjustments to it. And then we're gonna work in Photoshop. It just gives you a much better initial image to work with. Remember, I wanted to use this. So we're gonna come up here and select that image. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open. So it's gonna open these two images into Adobe Photoshop. So here's that first image that I was talking about. And we'll zoom into her face and you can see, yeah, it's totally out of focus. Yes, I could use shake reduction. Yes, I could do things to fix it. But the fact is this person focused here on her arm with a really shallow depth of field, which would have been good, but yeah, it's just not gonna be savable. If you have an out of focus image, don't use out of focus images. Photographers and people look at this and they can tell in two seconds whether you're image is sharp or your image is not sharp. So this looks pretty good. We've got our image here. I'll hit command zero just so it's a little bit bigger in the frame and you guys can see what I'm doing. Now remember I said I love the new AI. So I can come here for my new selection and hit select subject. And notice it's all done almost a perfect job of selecting my subject. So now I can come in and I can really do an accurate job with brightening just my subject up and not affecting outside of that area. When you make that select subject, it's not actually feathering your image. If I wanted to feather my image, I would have to go up into select and mask. But in this case, which is rare, because I almost always feather something, if I'm just making a small brightness adjustment, it's actually gonna work best by not feathering it and using that AI. So we'll go ahead and I'll hold my alt option and click on this. You can see it's a really hard edge. It's just hitting that area. Now it might be missing some things like right here. Is it missing something that I don't see? I don't know. Um, you know, you can come in here and apply that or fix that or there's a little area like right here maybe where it needs to be darkened. I don't know. Yeah, see that little spillover? That's not in there. So we can click on that mask. I can get that brush. We want the color black. Let me make this smaller and I'm gonna make that edge harder. So when you wanna be accurate, you want a small hard brush. And it's a little bit, I need to make it smaller because I can't see it. And then we're just gonna come in here and paint that out just in case it was. And it actually looks like 
that this is just in the image. It must be a white flower, so it's not spillover. I can come and clone this and fix it if I didn't like it, but it, it's not part of the image. All right, command zero, we're back to where we were. And so now we're toning this image. It's a little bit warm. Now, usually I don't actually use color balance. All right, that looks pretty good. So, so I've taken a lot of the yellow out of this image. That doesn't make it right or wrong. If you like it to be warm, you can do it. In this case, I want a cooler image. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that in this case. Now, right now, her skin for me is just a little bit of red and right in here, it's just a little bit red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my favorite color adjustment, which is hue saturation. So we're gonna go into reds. And so what I'm doing is changing the color of a color to a different color, which is kind of like a little tongue twister. So let me go over that slower. I am changing the color. In this case, it's red, anything that has red in it, to a different color just because it's not perfectly accurate. So I'm gonna shift this to the yellow to make the reds a little bit more yellow. So we're gonna go ahead and just go, as we go this way, you can see it makes everything more yellow. So we're just gonna add one or two. Look, when you do this, don't do this crazy wild swing or you do like plus 15, it's not gonna look good. It's usually only like one or two, it's a little bit of adjustment, just a small adjustment. And so that looks good, let me turn this on and off. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I'm gonna actually desaturate that a little bit and I'm gonna add some brightness to it. Brightness is, is actually something I like a lot, especially for reds. All right, so this looks pretty good. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using my info palette. So notice down here, I've got this info palette and I've got red, green, blue, and K. K value is the one I'm looking at. I'm gonna put it on her forehead on the bright side and read that value. And it's saying about 30%. Now, if she was out in the bright sun, I would want the brightness probably about where her arm is at 20%. So that's what her skin should be in bright sun, but it's not, it's in shade a little bit. So I think 30% is actually pretty good in this image. Now I can also go up here in the sky. I wanna make sure on my brightest area that I'm holding at least 2%. If I don't hold 2%, it's gonna to start to get splotchy on my image, but that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that area. Now I could get really anal and I could come in here to this foot. You see where we got this little thing. If I wanted to clone that out, that would be something that you could do. We're not going to be doing cloning in this image. We're just going to keep that separate. So I'm not going to go in here and fix little dots or imperfections in this video. What we're looking at is how do I tone? What am I looking at when I tone? This info palette is key. It kind of tells me where I'm at in the image. So one of the issues that you run into when toning images is this might look perfect to you right now. If you close this out and open it up, you might see there's an inconsistency or something that's not accurate. Usually that it's a little dark, a little bit too bright, a little warm, a little cool. And your eyes just kind of get messed up by looking at computer screens all day. It makes it really easy to fix that. We're gonna click on this color balance again. I'm actually gonna cool this image up a little bit more, I think. Trying to decide between one and two. I think I'm gonna do two. So that looks pretty good. I've done a pretty good job here. The last thing I'm gonna do is add that contrast back to this image. And so I'm gonna do use curves. I only use curves, I don't use levels. And this is a two start, this is a two step process for me. Increasing my contrast is simply sliding this slider in this direction along this line. That's increasing that contrast. And you can see right over here, this is kind of where your histogram starts. So you wanna get it closer to over there cause then you'll know you have your black. And that looks pretty good. But when you do this, it makes all your shadows darker. I don't want that. I only want my blackest of blacks to get blacker. So I'm actually gonna take this and you'll notice there's a little faint line here. That's your original curve line. I'm gonna drag this back up so that this area isn't affected, it's just affecting these dark shadows to make them darker. And we'll turn this on or off, and it's very subtle, but what you're seeing is that black just get much blacker. And if I come down here and I read this, now you see we're at like 99%, so I know I've got a good, strong black in this image. Now the next thing that I would do to tone this image, and you can see I didn't do a lot of steps. If you photograph, an image correctly, you don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff 
to tone an image. You only have to do a whole bunch of stuff when toning an image when you screw it up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is hit save as. So I'm gonna do command shift S or it's control shift S. And I wanna save this as a Photoshop file. I've just got this in my downloads, which is okay. So I'm just gonna show save this as a Photoshop file. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and save that. Anything that I have saved as a PSD or Photoshop file, I know I've toned or worked on. You'll notice I did not sharpen this image. Why did I not sharpen this image? Because you only sharpen an image if you're going to print it or use it. Don't sharpen an image at this point. It's not going to be beneficial to you. If I decide that I want to put this on social media and we're going to save that out. So let's say we're just going to save this out at 1500 pixels. Now I'm going to go through that process. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flatten this just to make it easier for people to see. Then we're going to go to image, image size. And I have a lot of this automated as an action, but I'm showing you what I'm doing. Now, when you save for the web, you, you save in pixels. Your resolution doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. All we're trying to do is save for pixels. So we want 1500 pixels and we're going to hit OK. And this is going to get dramatically smaller. Command zero to enlarge that back up. I'm at 175% of this image. So when you're sharpening, you want to be at 100% of your image, which is kind of small on my screen. Depending on the resolution of your screen is going to be dependent on what it looks like. Now, I have noticed that when I save for the web, I need to open my image up just a little bit because I'm going to be converting this from 16 bit to 8 bit and sRGB. And that's really dumbing down the photo. It's, it's compressing the, the tonal range and the colors and everything. And what happens is it gets just a little bit flat. I'm going to hit just a basic command M, which is curves. And I usually just brighten everything up just to here. And that's going to get it back to where it was. What you have to remember is, you know, a screen is, is probably the best an image is ever going to look, especially on a high resolution 5K screen. When you print it, printers can't print as well as a 5K monitor can display colors. It's, it's nowhere close. We need to compensate a little bit for that dumbing down process when we go to the web. So that's why I'm making that adjustment. So the next step after sizing is to sharpen your image. Now look, there's a whole bunch of different sharpening methods out there. I just made a really long video on sharpening. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's not about the method. It's about how you apply it. So we're going to take that into account here once again. And I could have saved my mask from before, but we'll hit select subject. I don't want to sharpen anything but my subject in this image. So I'm going to make a selection because then I can turn this selection into a mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command J to duplicate that. And you can see now all we have is just this subject. So that's going to be the area that I'm going to go ahead and sharpen. And we we'll go up here to filter sharpen. And for today, I'll use smart sharpen, even though I prefer unsharp mask on subjects like this, but we'll go ahead and use smart sharpen. Now the key to doing sharpening is first, you're viewing your image at 100% on your screen. Notice it's 100% right here. Now we don't see it because it's not placed, but we're gonna get it at 100%. And then you're gonna sharpen your image. Now I know a 1500 pixel image is gonna be way too sharpened at 92%. So 92% would be something for printing. The higher the resolution, the more you're gonna to need to sharpen, the less the resolution, the less you're gonna to need to sharpen. Usually at this, I do about 40%, so I'll just type in 40. Somewhere between 35 and 40%, and that looks pretty good to me. I've got my radius at 1.1, and reduced noise, I'm gonna to set to zero. And that's basically it, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and I'm done sharpening this image. Next step in doing this is because this is going out to the internet, we need to change the color profile. I've been working in Adobe 1998. The web uses sRGB. So we will go to edit, convert the profile. And notice source space, what we're working now is Adobe and we want it to convert to sRGB. 
And when you click OK, you're not going to see a change in this image at all. It's just converting the color space, but this isn't something that you will see a change in on your screen. Now, the last step is going to be Command Shift S, or if you're using the new version, notice you're going to have to use Save as a Copy, but I've gone to Legacy and I have a video on that. So if you want to watch about the new saving process, go ahead. But I've switched mine. So save as still works. I've got it as the legacy version and I can change this to JPEG. I'll just keep it as the same file. We're going to replace the one they already have there. I'm going to do it at a JPEG compression of 12. So I get my Hollis quality and really important. You always want to use baseline standard. Do not use these other two hit. Okay. And that is it. But that's basically the process that I use to tone an image in Adobe Photoshop. If you have any questions or you want me to take a look at one of your images, remember we have the new Facebook group that allows you to upload an image so I can see it and make suggestions on the image. Otherwise, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.